Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about nonfiction. Um, as you might know in a couple of days it's November and if you are watching booktube videos then you know that there is an event called nonfiction November. Um, it's always in November, da, hence nonfiction November, and it's hosted by Olive from a book Olive and uh, Gemma from Nonfic Books. Um, they made announcement videos. I will leave links to those videos down below, and they explain that the purpose is to have people read more nonfiction. So if you never read nonfiction, then maybe read one nonfiction book. And if you read nonfiction regularly, maybe read even more nonfiction in November. There's a Goodreads group um, where you can find suggestions for books. And there's also uh, some challenges to help you, you know, pick your nonfiction. And I thought this is a good opportunity to talk a little bit more of ways to get into nonfiction. Um, I, I promised a while ago that I would give more attention to nonfiction on my channel because I read a lot of nonfiction. So one of the things that, that you can do, of course, is if you are interested in a certain subject, um, you can pick the nonfiction book that deals with that subject. If you're interested in brain research or if you're interested in art history, you find plenty of nonfiction books about that subject. Or if you like to read a certain non-fiction genre, like biographies or memoirs, um, then you can pick a you know a certain person if you want to read biographies. That's never a difficulty for people who approach non-fiction in that way. But often I, I found that for some people it just doesn't work, especially if you don't read a lot of non-fiction and you don't know where to, where to even start, how to pick a topic or a subject or a non-fiction genre. And I wanted to, to give you, you know, ways of doing it differently. And that is especially for people who read mostly fiction, how you can cross over from fiction into non-fiction by using, quote unquote, the books you read, the novels you read, and then from there on find non-fiction books that might interest you and have something to do with the novel you just read. And as an example, uh, I have a, a novel uh, and then two non-fiction books that I read because of that novel. I want to show you is how you can go from a novel to certain non-fiction books. That's why crossover. And the novel in my example is Jean Rhee's White Sargasso C. Um, this was first published in 1966 and it's a you might have heard it you might have read it even because it's a considered a modern classic and it's a sort of a retelling of Jane Eyre the you know mad woman in the attic but again it's not about this specific book um, it's just this serves as an example how I cross how the crossover uh, went from this book to two non-fiction books. So I read this book, I think, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, and in, in the acknowledgments and the introduction, I came across um, um, something about the publisher, Andreas Deutsch, and his co-publisher, Diane Attil. I had never heard of Diane Attil then at the time, but I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Um, so let's check her out. I googled Diane Attil and I found out that she was born in 1917 and she worked in publishing and editing all her life. By the way, she's still alive. She uh, will turn 100 in, in December of this year. But anyway, the point was that I you know, got interested in her and then I looked whether she had written books and indeed she had. Um, and the first book by her I picked up was um, a, a memoir called Stet. It was published in 2000 uh, and for those of you who might not be familiar with the, with the term Stet, it's a term in editing when you have crossed out a certain part of the text but then you want to uncross it out so you want to leave it in, you uh, mark it and then uh, write a Stet uh, in the margin which, which means the text should remain in, in the book or the manuscript. 
Anyway, so I, I picked up this book and it's a, a, it was a really wonderful reading experience. Diane Attil turned out to be a, a very funny, very interesting uh, a woman. And she talks about how she became an editor, how she founded this publishing company together with uh, Andreas Deutsch. And especially she talks a lot about you know, the editing process and uh, the, the authors she worked with. And there were a lot of very famous authors, uh, Philip Roth, Naipaul, uh, Jean Rees, obviously. And then in the course of this book, she talks also about one specific project that was, as she described it, one of the most difficult editing projects that she did in, in her life. And uh, the book she talked about, I had never heard of either. Um, and that book was the book that I then checked out next. And that book was Into That Darkness by Gita Sereni, first published in 1974. Um, this is Gita Sereni, um, was born in the early 20th century, and she um, wrote about her experiences during Nazi Germany. She was Austrian and then fled first to Switzerland and later uh, to England, and she had, she died in 2015, I think, and she had lived in England uh, ever since um, um, before the war. And one of the projects she did was um, um, interviews with Franz Stangl. That's a picture of him here. And Franz Stangl was one of four commanders of the uh, death camp in uh, one of the death camps, and he was one of the four commanders in Treblinka. Um, so uh, Gita Sereni conducted over 70 interviews with Franz Stangl and she had this huge material which would made her sick, which made her um, angry and it was haunting and she, but she wanted to make it into a book and that's what Diane Attil described in, in the book that I've mentioned before instead, um, not instead but in the book stead, um, how she, Diane helped uh, Sereni to, to work the book and how difficult it was, first of all because of the material, but also because of this, uh, the topic, of course, because uh, uh, Franz Stangl turned out to be, you know, just a regular guy, quote-unquote, turning into a mass murderer. And finally, after years and years of work, they had this final... Uh, uh, they had finalized the book and they published it, like I said, in 1974. And it's not an easy book to read, but it's certainly one of the best books I have read um, about the people responsible for the Holocaust. In this, um, in, in this instance, one of the commanders, as I said, in, in a death camp. So this was the, the second book that I've probably... Um, would have missed or would have not known about if I hadn't read Diane Attil's memoir and Diane Attil's memoir I wouldn't have read if I hadn't read uh, Jane, uh, Jean Reese's book. So I, I don't know whether whether this video makes sense at all but what I wanted uh, to, to get across is the fact that if you're not reading a lot of non-fiction and but you read a lot of novels a lot of fiction uh, and you would want to venture into non-fiction then the novels you read might be a good starting point because there might be something in that novel whether it's in in the topic of the novel or whether like in my case it was in the acknowledgments that sparks your interest and from there you find a non-fiction book and from that non-fiction book you might find another and of course after this book I could go on and on reading more about Gita Sereni, her other books but I don't want to have this video you know hours long it's it's just um, like I said I'm trying to give you an example how to cross over from your favorite genre fiction into non-fiction like I said before, I don't know whether this makes any sense to you, but I hope that it had been maybe helpful to give you some idea how to do that crossover. And I'm interested, you know, whether you find that found that video helpful, um, uh, whether you have experienced the same, that you sometimes, you know, read a novel and from there you find a non-fiction book that interests you. Um, and if you find this interesting and helpful, I might continue with it and give other examples how you can go from a novel uh, to a non-fiction book. 
books. So this was it, my my take for nonfiction November. I hope you will join in nonfiction November and you will read nonfiction books. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it a bit helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments because I'm really interested whether this is something um, what I did now in this video that works. So let me know uh, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye bye!